back up to the G2 era. EDG are your champions heading into World 2016. Let's go! Let's go! Samsung, the improbable, the impossible is happening. They are going to world. Hello and welcome to the 2016 World's Group Draw Show. I'm Riving Tabism III along with Joshua Jatt Leesman and we are coming to you live from Riot Studios as we find out who will take on whom in the group stage at Worlds. It is so exciting, Riv. In just a couple of minutes, the first stage of competition will be set as the 16 teams that qualified for the World Championship will be drawn from three pools into the four groups. That's right. As always, we want you at home as well to be part of the show, so jump on Twitter and make sure you use the hashtag Worlds. There are seven different regions from across the globe being represented by the 16 teams that have qualified for the championship. So let's dive in and check out who your 2016 Worlds competitors are. That's in pool one from China's LPL. It's Edward Gaming, Flash Wolves of the LMS, Korea's Rocks Tigers, and North America's TSM. In pool two, we have AHQ Esports Club from the LMS, Counter Logic Gaming from North America, G2 Esports and H2K Gaming from Europe, Team IMA and Royal Never Give Up from the LPL, and finally Samsung Galaxy and SK Telecom T1 from Korea. That's right. In pool three, we have Elvis Knox Luna from the Commonwealth of Independent States, North America's Cloud9, INT. TZ Esports from Brazil and Europe's final representative, Splice. This year, we are going to be doing something a little different for the group draw show. Some of the teams competing have been kind enough to set up live feeds for the draw, so all of you at home can view their reactions. You can see some of them here. We will be intermittently <laughs> checking on them throughout the show to see how they feel about the groups they landed, and we'll clip the best reactions. It's going to be great. As we get ready to begin the draw, we're going to do a quick run-through of how the teams are drawn into their respective groups. Exactly. So there are three pools, and teams will be drawn from these pools into one of four groups. Groups a, B, C, or D. Now, each group will contain a team from Pool 1, two teams from Pool 2, and a team from Pool 3. Teams will also be color-coded by region to make it easier for everyone to follow along. Okay, so let's take a brief look at the rules of the draw now. The first rule is no group can have more than one team from the same region. Secondly, as Jack just mentioned, Groups must have one team from Pool 1, two teams from Pool 2, and one team from Pool 3. And finally, when a team is drawn, they must be placed into the next available group as long as it does not create an invalid draw now or at any point in the future by preventing another seed from being placed in a valid position. This is one of the more complex rules, but if it happens, we'll tell you exactly why a team gets bumped to a different group. Right, we'll keep track. And if you do still feel a little lost, a deeper look into the rules can be found on lolesports.com, where you can find a group draw guide that outlines all the nitty gritty details. Now that we know the rules, let's take a look at how the draw will actually take place. Absolutely. The names of these 16 teams have been placed into capsules. These capsules now sit on pedestals on screen, which you can see are divided by pools one, two, and three. And these capsules will then be drawn and opened by very four very special guests that we have here to help out with the show. They represent the four regions that earned pool one berths for Worlds at this year's Mid-Season Invitational. Our first guest was a member of the 2012 World Championship winning team, the Taipei Assassins Mistake. Always good to see a former world champion here. Also, we have from the LCK, AD Carey, who won the first season of champions and has spent the past four years playing and casting in Korea, Captain Jack. Yep, and representing China's LPL, we have someone who is considered by many as one of the greatest AD Carries of all time. It's former Team WE member, Wei Xiao. And finally, to represent North America, it is Scar, who attended the Season 2 World Championship on Dignitas, Coach Dignitas, and CLG, and currently reports on the North American LCS. We're almost ready to get things rolling. It's now time to kick off the 2016 World Championship group draw. We will begin with Pool 1, which contains four Summer Split champions. Oh, we are so close just to go over the teams in this group. From the LPL, it is Edward Gaming. From the LMS, it is the Flash Wolves. From Korea, it is Rocks, And also from North America, it is TSM. All right, let's get this group draw show underway. Mistake has taken his place at the pedestal. If you will do the honors of drawing the first team, please.
How does it all start? It is going to start with the Rocks Tigers, so they will slot right into Group A. And I think it's rather fitting, probably the favorite heading into Worlds is the first one drawn out of the pool. Absolutely. The Rocks Tigers are the LCK Summer Split Champions and Korea's number one seed at Worlds. This is their second World Championship appearance. The last time they competed was as the Koo Tigers, and they were runners up to SKT. Their top laner, Smeb, was the LCK's Spring and Summer Split MVP. And this is a team that was made up of players who at one point or another had either been benched by other teams or retired. But now they make up the number one seed in the number one region in the world. Yeah, and I think a lot of things for the Tigers was that they weren't able to transition their regular season success to the postseason, but they finally did that. They broke the curse. They won LCK. And now they're the number one seed from Korea. It's been a crazy run for them. Mistake, will you please draw the next team? All right, so this will be the Flash Wolves. They will go into Group B right next to the Rocks Tigers right there. And it's been quite a run for Flash Wolves, winning both the Spring and the Summer Split. Not an uncommon place for them, however. Flash Wolves were the Spring and Summer Split champions of the LMS and the region's number one seed. They did, however, earn that Pool 1 seed for the LMS by getting out of the group stage at the Mid-Season Invitational. This will be their second appearance at Worlds, but the third appearance for Maple, NL, and Sword Art as the Gamania Bears previously. In 2015, they advanced the first as the first seed in their group, which included Koo Tigers, and then they lost to Origin in the quarterfinals. Yeah, definitely going to look to improve. A Pool 1 seed has a lot to look up to. And we actually have a reaction, apparently, from the last draw we saw. <laughs> Happy be, that they were drawn. Ready basically. to be drawn. It's, it's what comes next. It's, it's who they true. will be drawn against, which can be pretty crazy. As we move on, mistake, will you please draw the next team? All right, the green shows EDG there, so the LPL will slot into Group C right after the flashes have been drawn. Their worlds yet again. EDG having one of the best runs ever in their head of the yeah, LPL. 16 and 0 in the LPL. They also have a very strong roster coming in. Clear Love, obviously the leader for these guys. This will be his fourth time attending at Worlds. Also the third time the LPL has been sending EDG to Worlds right here. So they're looking very strong heading into this. Deft also considered maybe one of the best AD carries in the world. It, it's going to be a crazy run for them. Like we said, with Clear Love going there, obviously going to help put the team on his back. And we're going to see if they can bring that record now into Worlds. We're seeing what China can do this year at yeah. the LPL region. Absolutely. Mistake, we draw that final pool one seat. As was expected, <laughs> TSM, the final team in Pool 1, will now go into Group D, and that will set the final team from Pool 1. They've been drawn. TSM are the NALCS Summer Split Champions and the number one seed representing North America. They have attended every World's Championship to date and are the only professional League of Legends team to do so. Domestically, they just came off the back of a 17-1 split, which is one of the most successful in North American history. The mid laner Bjergsen has been the North American MVP for a record three times in a row now. Not in a row, but three times now. And it will be the first championship for their top laner, Hanser, and support rookie, Biofrost. Very high expectations for TSM coming into this world championship. And now we just have to wait for the rest of the teams to be drawn in. Speaking of which, that will complete pool one as all the teams have been officially drawn and placed into each of the four groups. So let's move on to pool number two. That's right, pool two consists of eight teams and each group will receive two from the pool. These teams are AHQ Esports of the LMS, CounterLogic Gaming from the North American LCS and G2 Esports along with H2 Gaming from the European LCS. Yeah, also on pool two, our team Aimee and we will never give up from the LPL, along with Samsung Galaxy and SK Telecom T1 from Korea's LCK. That's right. And the first four teams from pool two will be drawn by Captain Jack, while the following four will be drawn by Wei Xiao. All right, Captain Jack, if you will, begin the draw for pool two. Red means EU, and this yep. is actually going to be G2. So this is the number one team from Europe now getting drawn in with the Rocks Tigers into that group A. Looking very strong as of recent. G2 Esports won both the spring and summer splits to become the undisputed champions of Europe. 
and the region's number one seed. This is their first appearance at Worlds as it was also their first season in the ULCS. However, their performance at MSI resulted in a Pool 1 seed loss for Europe, and they will now be drawn from Pool 2 as seen. Their jungler trick won Europe's MVP award in both spring and summer splits, and they have Zen and Mithy making their return into Worlds, where they made it into semifinals last year with Origin before losing to the Koo Tigers. And they're immediately placed into a very challenging group. Yeah. They were the team that actually attended MSI, as you mentioned. It lost the Pool 1 seed for Europe, so that cost them by playing against the number one team from perhaps the strongest region. We'll see how it continues to spread out. Captain Jack, please draw the next team. Okay, so this is SKT, the team <laughs> no one wanted drawn into their group, but that means they will be in Group B along with the Flash Wolves. That's right, SKT come into Worlds as Korea's second seed. They qualified on championship points after placing first in the spring and third in the summer. This will be their third Worlds appearance and the first time in Worlds history that they will see a defending champion. We will see a defending champion take to the stage. Every time they've attended Worlds, they have won and they're the only team to hold more than one championship title. Faker and Bangi are the only two players that still remain from the world's 2013 and 15 winning rosters. Yeah, and they're still an incredibly scary team. Even though they Absolutely. didn't do that well in the most recent playoffs over in the LCK, they're still SKT, and people expect them to show up on the international stage. Sure, we'll see more reactions to that group as we yeah. move on. Captain Jack, please continue to draw. This will be AHQ, so the final team from yep. the LMS that we have to draw. No problems here, so they will slot right under EDG, L LPL, and LMS in Group C. Yep, no problem putting them in there. AHQ qualified for Worlds as the second seed of the LMS after winning their regional qualifier with three O's over Hong Kong Esports and M17. This is their third appearance in a row at Worlds. The only team returning their entire starting roster from 2015 to now 2016 Worlds. In 2015, they advanced from their group over Cloud9, but then eventually lost to the champions of SKT in the quarterfinals. Yeah, they're also drawn into that group with EDG, who many consider an extremely strong team, and we actually get to see AHQ's reaction to being drawn into that group. <laughs> <laughs> It happens. That hard, is the nature of the head. draw. Yeah, very tough group. We'll have to see who the other two teams are in that one. Okay, Captain Jack, please continue the draw. <laughs> All right, so because TSM is currently in Group D, that means COG will drop into the next available slot, and COG will actually be the third team now in Group A, along with Rox and G2. That is right. Counter Logic Gaming claim North America's second seed on championship points. They finished first in the spring and fourth in the summer, which was enough to get them to Worlds. This will be their fourth World Championship appearance. The last time they competed on the international stage was at the Midseason Invitational, where they finished second behind SKT. This will be the same roster that played at MSI to be attending Worlds, so they have that chance. Absolutely, and they played against G2 when they were at MSI as well. They did very well there. They're hoping to be able to get back to that level when they finish second at MSI, yep. and they've been placed in a rather difficult group, but you gotta take what the draw gives you. Absolutely. So now we've reached the halfway point in the draw, and there are four teams left in Pool 2. We'd like to thank Captain Jack for all his help in the first four draws, and now we have welcomed Wei Zhao to the stage for the next four of Pool 2. Wei Zhao, will you please draw the next team? This pick, of course, will go into Group D, and TSM has drawn RNG now into that group, making it TSM and RNG, and yet to be seen, two more teams. All right, so RNG will be fitting in under Team Solo Mid. RNG are LPL's second seed, qualifying on championship points after finishing first in the spring and second in the summer split. This is their first appearance at Worlds, and this is Uzi's third time at a World Championship. He's the only player to play in back-to-back -back World Finals, and he'll be doing it with four new teammates yet again. However, this time he also has two former world champions on the roster, and Looper and Mon. Yeah, the individual talent on this team is absolutely through the roof. The question is, can they bring the cohesion to the stage? Yeah. And we're going to be tested in that group so far against TSM with RNG. 
We'll see who else gets tested as we move on. Wei Zhao, please draw the next team. So because there is already an LPL team in Group C and D, that means an LPL team must be in B, meaning H2K is bumped now to Group C, joining EDG and AHQ. We see the placement in C. H2K comes into Worlds as Europe's second seed based on championship points after placing fourth in the spring and third in the summer of the EU LCS. This will be their second year attending Worlds, which means that every year since H2K was promoted to the LCS, they have represented Europe at Worlds. It will also be the first appearance of the much-hyped AD carry for Given, who subbed in for the team late in the summer to help with this very world's run. Yes, definitely going to be an uphill battle for H2K. Last year, Ryu was drawn into a group with EDG and SKT. We actually have Ryu's reaction to the group he just got drawn into. <laughs> hey, man, you got to take what is given to you. I, EDG the sign of HQ. tough matches to come. With H2K, yet another world's run for him. Wei Xiao, please pull the next team. All right, so we have Samsung pulled here because SKT already yep. is in Group B. This means Samsung will go into Group D and join TSM and RNG. Samsung earned Korea's third seed by upsetting KT Rolster in the regional qualifier after losing their previous 19 games against KT Rolster. Samsung White won a world championship back in 2014, and now the organization is making another run with a completely different roster. This is the fourth team that Samsung has sent to Worlds, and their jungler ambition has been a pro player for almost six years now. This will be his first attendance at a world championship. Yeah, pretty tremendous story going from a mid laner to a jungler now making it to Worlds. And you could see the emotion on their faces when they qualified. So it's going to be really cool to see them attend and compete at the world championship. Absolutely. And Pool 2 has one more to offer. Wei Zhao, will you do the honors, please? Yes, and this means the final team from Pool 2 has been drawn. Aimee from the LPL will go into the Group B with Flash Wolves and SKT. That's right. Aimee won the LPL, regional qualifier to become the LPL's third seed at Worlds. This will be their first appearance at a World Championship. They won the region's equivalent of Challenger in the LSPL in spring and then managed to make it to Worlds, much like Origin did last year. In the LSPL, they were known as Edward Esports. They were a B team to EDG, therefore many players here are former subs for EDG, including Amazing J, who played at Worlds last year for Edward Gaming. Yeah, very exciting stuff for them, and we have now drawn all of the teams in Pool 2, and they have been placed into their respective groups. So now let's take a quick look at the final four teams, which come from Pool 3. That's right, these teams are Elvis Knox Luna from the Commonwealth of Independent States, Cloud9 from the North American LCS, INTZ Esports from Brazil, and finally from the European LCS, it is Splice. Heading to the stage on the podium now will be Skara to draw the final pool of teams. Skara, if you will, begin the draw. So Skara has drawn Cloud9. There is already a North American team in Group A, so that means Cloud9 will join Group B with Flash Wolves, SKT, and IMA. That is correct. This year, the second year in a row that Cloud9 made it to Worlds through the regional qualifier. They have represented North America at Worlds four years in a row now, but this will be Cloud9's first trip without high. However, Sneaky has been there all four times, which makes him tied for the most world appearances with EDG's Clear Love and TSM's Double Lift out of the players here at Worlds. It will also be the first world championship Top laner Impact has attended since he won back in 2013 with SKT. And Impact is going to be taking a lot of momentum into this World Championship. He also gets to be in a group against his former team, SK Telecom, which is very exciting to see. It's going to be awesome stuff. Skara, please continue the draw. Elvis Nox Luna. Absolutely. They will be joining Group A with the Rocks, Tigers, G2 Esports, and Counter Logic Gaming to complete that group. Albus Knox is a team representing the Commonwealth of Independent States who qualified for Worlds through the International Wildcard Qualifier. This is their first appearance at Worlds and the second appearance for the region overall. Up until recently, they were known as Hard Random 
and now have made the playoffs of an international wildcard event on four separate occasions. Their mid laner Kira single-handedly carried the CIS to the All-Star event in 2015 by winning the 1v1 tournament at the 2015 IWCI All-Stars. Always an uphill battle for the teams that qualify via the international wildcard, but Kira definitely seems ready to take on some international competition. Skara, please draw the next team. All right, INTZ from Brazil. Brazil will now be joining Group C, EDG, AHQ, H2K, and now INTZ. INTZ from Brazil qualified for the World Championship via the International Wildcard Qualifier, but in front of their home crowd. This is the first appearance at Worlds and the third appearance for Brazil. They're no, stra they're no strangers to International Wildcard events. They made playoffs at IWC on three separate occasions. Whenever their jungler Revolta has been on that stage, the INTZ lineup has made these IWC events. Now they get that chance to compete on the stage. Exactly. It's been a very long time coming for INTZ, being a top team in Brazil, but never quite making it to the world stage. And we actually have a reaction from that last draw. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! I get that. And I can see that if you look at the possible teams they could have been <laughs> drawn into with Pool 2, getting HQ and H2K, not bad. So they're very happy to be drawn into Group C. Oh, I was really excited to see what reactions we get down at the end of the table because it means a lot for these teams. Skara, will you do the honors of drawing the final team? And Splice will be the final team to draw in here, joining TSM, RNG, Samsung, in that Group D. That's a tough one. It wasn't a question. They did make it. They were in there. Splice won the European Regional Qualifier to take Europe's third seed to Worlds. This is their first appearance at Worlds, which has made all the more impressive when you consider that back in spring they had to play in the promotion tournament to avoid relegation. Since then, they did a complete 180 to make it all the way to the European LCS Summer Finals, where they came up just short to G2 Esports. Incredibly imp impressive turnaround considering the only change to the roster was bringing on rookie support, Mickey X. And it's been a constant uphill battle for Splice, and they've been constantly improving. And Worlds yes. is just the next step. So they're placed into Group D. Obviously, as a Pool 3 team, they know they have a challenge ahead of them. But talking to them, they're ready for it. I can't wait to see what we have to say about these. Now that the 16 teams have been drawn, let's take a look at the groups themselves. In Group A, we have Korea's Rocks Tigers from Pool 1. Europe's G2 Esports and North America's CounterLogic Gaming from Pool 2 and Elvis Knox Luna from Pool 3. Yeah, very interesting group so far. In Group B, we have the Flash Wolves from Pool 1, Korea's SKT and the LPL's IMEI from Pool 2, and North America's Cloud9 from Pool 3. That's right, and in Group C, it's the LPL's EDG from Pool 1, AHQ's Esports Club, and H2 Gaming from Pool 2, and INTZ Esports from Pool 3. That is definitely the group INTZ was happy to be drawn into. Finally, in Group D, we have North America's TSM, Royal Never Give Up, and Samsung Galaxy from Pool 2, and then Splice was drawn in to round out the group. That's right. You can catch all these teams in action when the group stages kick off in San Francisco on the 29th of September, with the opening match happening at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Tickets are also still available for the group stages, and you can find them at lollysports.com for those interested. That's right. We'd like to say a big thank you to Mistake, Captain Jack, Wei Zhao, and Skara for coming in and helping us today. And before we jump into a discussion with our analyst, let's take another look at your 2016 World Championship groups. And remember, if you want to tweet about the group draw show, use the hashtag Worlds. Absolutely, and I just love seeing all 16 teams laid out like this. These are the groups we are going to get to see. Scara drew Splice into TSM's group. We got to see everyone. I'm sure there will be plenty of talking about who got drawn into which group. I'm personally excited for every single one of these groups, but I can't imagine a group draw where I wouldn't have been excited for the groups. That, yeah, exactly. Seeing what happens every year, the fact that it's also different from last year. Some people are like, I wonder if there's going to be matchups, and then people can yeah. kind of go back and rewrite history. But nope, we got a lot of fresh things coming in, and it's going to be amazing. So after that exciting draw, it's, it's only now time to hand it over to Dash and our analysts to see their take on the World Championship groups. Thank you very much, Riv. Hello, and welcome to the second half of the World's Group Draw Show. I'm your host, James Das Patterson, and I'll be doined, joined rather by Sam Kobe Hartman, Kensler, or doined, whatever it is, uh, Martin Deficio Linga, and of course, Jake Spahn, Tiberi. I've seen you recently, haven't seen the two of you. How have you been? 
pretty good, pretty good. Pretty excited about the groups as well. It's going to be super cool. Initial reactions on any of that? Are we freaking out about where our regions were placed? Are we feeling good? As, as soon as G2 uh... was drawn, the fish feel, oh, no. Yeah, they they got rock as tigers. It developed, as it developed, though, you're yeah. feeling more comfortable, right? Uh, I think getting CLG and then also Albus as yeah. the last two picks are definitely teams G2 should be able to beat. But one thing I do want to point out, that's only, like, some of you European teams, my friend. The other one's got a couple <laughs> of rough areas. That sacrifice Maybe. To the... We got to sacrifice some. We'll have, we'll have plenty of time to get into the groups individually in a second, but we also have Freak and Jad standing by to answer all of your questions and discuss your comments on Twitter. Thank you very much, Dash. I am David Freak Trilly with Jat, who has been here the whole yeah. show. Wonderful. Thank you for Let's being keep here. Going. I can't wait to do analysis on their analysis. We get to be Twitter analysts. That's it's going to be right great. There, yes, because we're going to be taking your questions from Twitter. If you have questions for us, if you have thoughts you want to be heard by the entire world, then tweet us at Elable Esports. Use the hashtag worlds, and we're going to get these tweets up on this banner right here. Yeah, and while you're sending in your tweets, we're going to take one more look at Group A. Just to go over it, we literally just drew it, and we want to show it again. So Group A had Rocks Tigers picked from Pool 1, G2, and CLG from Pool 2, and then Albus Knox from Pool 3. And so let's take a look at what you guys had to say about this group. Our first tweet at the top from at Sterling Sam C saying, Oh, well, Esports, tough group for CLG, hashtag Worlds. I'm going to say it's reasonable for CLG. I think it's reasonable. I feel like getting in a group with the Rocks Tigers is obviously yeah. one of the worst four. But then if you're looking at the Pool 2 team that was drawn in, the Pool 3 team, I don't think you can be that upset if you're CLG with this group. Yeah, top team in Europe definitely could be rough. Of course, the next one up here from Tyler Rawson says, CLG into the group of death rip. Same thought. It's all a bunch of NA <laughs> I mean, fans. I definitely feel like somewhere every group can be considered a group of death, depending sure. on your relative power ranking of the teams. I'm going to say there is a different group of death in this one. I agree. It, it even starts with D. Sorry, spoiler alert. And finally here from Fairy Alice saying, Group A looking like the deathmatch group, XD. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, there will be death in yeah. these groups. <laughs> All two teams are going to get eliminated from each group. Yeah. All right. Well, I was going to do it here for the Twitter analysts here. Thank you very much for chiming in. Of course, keep doing so throughout the show. But now let's have a real analyst talk about this. <laughs> That's well, my real <laughs> analyst. At least free. Well, I wanted to say, like, a, <laughs> Jack, Jack just stays. Ah, what? <laughs> a, a group of death is usually the where all the teams have the possibility of dying, right? It's not... Oh, one team is probably gonna die. I that's not a group CLG of CLG fans are so scared of Elvis Knox Luna. I mean, if you're gonna win it, <laughs> I mean, well, that's, that's, that's the one. You've you gotta be you gotta get out. Yeah, yeah to you get gotta out. get out of the group. One thing is, you know, being part of the group stage and then beating Elvis, but another thing is facing D2 and Rocks Tigers. Right, so let, let's break this down though, because Rocks Tigers, a lot would consider them to be the front runner Everyone. or the favorite of this tournament. EDG might be yeah. the other team that people look to to say, hey, they they could they could make a statement here. <laughs> <What>? All right, <laughs> well, never mind. I take it all back since Spawn doesn't agree. No, but we have Rocks Tigers kind of clearly out to the front. And then there's that competition for the second seed out of the group. Of course, Albus Knox, our international wildcard team, is going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah. But G2 CLG, how do we feel about this matchup specifically? I think it's only fair that G2 got rocks, by the way, because MSI it's was the, the opportunity <laughs> to get the first seed, so they get it back here. I think that looking at G2, they'll be happy with this group, yep. actually. They'll be confident against CLG. They should definitely be confident against the wildcard team. And, you know, where they are strong on the map, the fact that they have such a strong bottom lane, they have such a great jungler, I think actually puts them in a good favor for this group. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, if we're looking at MSI, uh, obviously G2 much weaker there, CLG much stronger there, but things have definitely changed a lot. The ad simple addition of Sven and Mithy. Small addition. Small addition of, like... of Sven and Mithy completely changes the look of this. And, you know, plus CLG have been working ever since MSI to try and get back to that level. Yes, I do have faith in the boot camp. Uh, I think it's going to, you know, do wonders for them. However, G2 right now, uh, with the addition of Sven and Mithy, the bottom lane is too scary. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree that CLG of the second seed teams would be definitely one of the weakest mm -hmm. of, of all the teams. So if you are G2, you know, the guys, they saw Rocks Tigers first, they started tweeting, time to go vacation and everything. <laughs> but then now to see CLG and Alpo. So I think they actually have a pretty good match there. They have some star players and like Trick, Sven and Mithy who should be able to do a lot of work against TCLG. You talk about CLG being one of the weaker Pool 2 teams. We actually have a reaction from Rox in response to CLG being drawn, as well as Albus Knox, into their group. So take a look. <laughs> there it is, right there. I think, I think realizing, as you mentioned, the fact that they're drawn one of the weaker uh, Pool 2 teams, so in terms of uh, being challenged even to get out of groups, it's probably very unlikely for Rox Tigers. Also, can I just say I don't love any videos of Rox Tigers. They are always <laughs> yeah, so happy. So happy yeah. Especially with Peanut now on the team, too. But Speaking of Peanut, 
junglers in this group? Do, is this, I mean, uh, or rather, is there a position in this group that you feel is loaded that's going to provide a lot of, I mean, we've got Trick, we've got Peanut, Smithy, who has, you know, consistently been underrated yeah. as a jungler in NA and has stepped up to perform in scenarios like MSI. Is this a jungle type pool or what's the what's kind of the favored role here? Well, for the jungle, I'm definitely looking at the single matchup of Peanut and Trick. Mm. I think that's going to be super exciting. One of the things about why people keep saying Smithy is underrated is his ability to handle aggressive junglers. So he might actually uh, be able to handle Peanut and we'll see how that develops. Uh, it's a team that's, effort. That's definitely it's, a big... It's definitely a team yeah. effort. Um, I, I'm not necessarily looking at like where's the strongest. I'm actually looking at some question marks okay. and I think like... A bunch of the mid laners in this group specifically okay. have, have have a lot of question marks coming into this tournament. Like Kuro is a guy where it's hard to call him the star player on, on Rocks Tigers. He's shown in the past that he can struggle. Uh, obviously, who he is the same deal for CLG. And Perks is a guy who people really want to see evolve and become a star player, but he's right now mainly I feel due due to attitude, not able to perform at the absolute highest level. So I actually have a lot of question marks, but I think Perks has to be able to be the best the best mid laner in this group here to really show something at Worlds. I think that there, if, if there is a strong role, it's not jungler support in this group. When I have a look through the team support, even Albus Nox's yeah. support, Lacrit is their star player. So I, when you go down the line, I think that the support uh, actually very diverse and different in this group and how bottom lane fleshes out on the current meta is so incredibly important. So I'm looking towards, you know, the likes of the Afro moves to be able to get their teams through if they're able to pull it off on Mythic. Final comment. Also, I mean, Deficio talking about mid laners, you didn't even mention Kira, right? He's, he's, he's obviously definitely doing, a star yeah. mid laner. Yep. He went to All Stars. You know, that the is. The non question mark. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's one hope for Albus Knox, right? Uh, if they are looking to try and gain something there. Uh, but your point on perks, I think, is definitely true um, as far as you're know, coming back from MSI. All right, well, with these preliminary thoughts in mind, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. I know you've only had about 10 minutes to digest these groups, but out of Group A, what are the two teams that are moving on to the quarterfinals? Kobe, starting with you. Uh, I'm going to go for Rocks first, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hate to, I hate to agree with the official <laughs> off the bat already, but ah. G2, I, I'm going to have to give it to G2. Uh, the addition of Sven and Mythia again is, is obviously the biggest issue here. Yeah, I agree with Kobe, 100%. Tigers first, G2 second. All right, Any yeah. disagreement? No, nah, no disagreement at all. I think it's pretty clear cut, this one. All right, so it seems pretty, uh, seems pretty uh, put together here, but that's, uh, that's going to do it for us and the analysts in Group A. Now it's time to throw it back to Jat and Freak to find out what you had to say about Group B. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm excited for brand support, personally. Yeah. Albus Knox. I'm disappointed in Kobe for not voting for COG. He's <laughs> hanging around with Deficio too much. This happened at MSI, too. Deficio's yeah. like, G2 is amazing. G2 is amazing when they finished fifth. Yeah. Um, I think I, G2's better now. Yeah, I think they are as well. I think they have proper predictions. I think these guys are correct. Let's go on to Group B, of course. Let's recap the teams that are in the group, of course. Make sure you guys will know what's going on. Number one pool, uh, Team Flash World, number one from the LMS. SK Telecom T1 from Korea. Team IMA from the Chinese LPL. And Cloud9 from North America. I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah, this is a really interesting group. Just the general strength kind of across the board is going to mm -hmm. be really hard to predict this. Let's check out the tweets, though. At Tina, <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Impact versus SKT. Hashtag Worlds. That's super exciting. Yes. That's the first thing that I saw when I realized that group was drawn. Yep. Impact really wants to play against SKT mm -hmm. when he's coming here, and that's just awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Let's go to the next one here. We got uh, Robert Gundren saying, Group C and D breathe a sigh of relief as SK Telecom from LCK get drawn into Group B. And I agree. Yeah. Uh, easily the strongest pool two, pool 2 team defending World Champs, SK Telecom T1. Unfortunately, now you've got three teams that have to play against that guy. Literally no one wanted to be drawn into SKT's group, yep. so rip. Yeah, Flash rip, Flash. unlucky. And finally, here we have uh, Jacob uh, Foldina. Sorry if I got your name wrong, saying, so C9, either SKT or EDG, feels bad, man. Yep, and yeah, they got the SKT side of it. But I think the, the competition for number two makes it palatable. Yeah, I think this group is fascinating as far as Flash Wolves, Cloud9, and even Aimee going up against it. Yeah. They surprise at Worlds. A lot of people don't really know that much about them. So this is one of the more interesting groups to watch for sure. It's going to be a tight one, absolutely. So you hear what we've, you've heard what we've had to say. So over to our analysts. Thank you. One more time. Before we jump into the actual analysis of this group, I want to hit a few reaction shots of the Flash Wolves as they saw the rest of their group filled in since they held the number one seed. Let's take a look. Or maybe not. Maybe we had a Flash Wolves. All right. Yay! Until that happens, I guess we'll talk it. about it. Um, so, no, no, uh, Flash Wolves, the thing that I want to talk about here is exactly what Jat was talking about, the closeness of this group behind SKT. <laughs> All right, Flash Wolves is coming now. So here we go. Reaction shots from Flash Wolves as they saw the rest of their group drawn in. Oh, 
all smiles and claps, as they see. I think that this kind of, you know, it, it, it does relate exactly to what Jat was saying in terms of the closest. Obviously, nobody wanted SKT drawn into their group in Pool 2. But beyond SKT, we're looking at three teams that all could probably compete for that second seed out of the group. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at the first seeds, everybody wanted Flash Wolves as their first seed, right? Yep. Maybe the softest first seed. SKT, the strongest second seed. So it's... It kind of evens it out, right? Uh, In a sense, as as the it almost flip well. them, yeah. right? I mean, this is the kind of group where if you're a team who is not maybe playing to make the final and just playing to make it out of groups, it's perfect. Because SKT, obviously, clear fav favorite for number one. But then C9, IMA, and Flash Wolves, all three teams who can actually make it out of this group here. And the problem is then you become a second seed and you got to face some of the, the top seeds. Yeah. Let's not forget final. Flash Wolves' history against SKT, Yeah, they're beating though. them before. Yeah, that's exactly right. MSI, they were able to take them down twice. It's saying that, like, you know, if you want to get out of groups and then not have to play SKT straight away as well, maybe you yeah. get to the semis off the back <laughs> of this group. Well, you're going to get, like, Tigers or EDG most likely. Yeah, so. so there's some good teams coming out here. The one thing I will say is, like, this is the first time I ever saw a group and was like, maybe the... Seed number one is actually like one of the weakest teams I in agree. a group. Like that is so incredibly scary to say because I may match up on paper so incredibly effective against these guys because they don't have the strong solo lanes like all the other teams in this group have. They in fact have like a really so strong support and you know a very unpredictable jungler. So I think that I may, while not being a favorite in this, can potentially make waves. Yeah, and I think uh, Flash Wolves have a lot of issues coming into this tournament here. A lot of people obviously remember MSI where they made top four and. They have always shown they were a good team. They've been able to beat, as you said, SKT in the past and best of ones. But right now, we're in a standard lane meta. They have an AD carry who is extremely weak in the laning phase. They have a top laner who's weak in the laning phase. It's all about Kaza, Mabel, and then Sword Art if he gets onto the right champions. I think they're going to struggle a lot in the early game. And I think a team like IMA can take advantage. And especially C9, who has very strong laners, can punish this. I was just waiting to talk about Impact there we go. Here because MMD has definitely, you know, looked like he needed, needed some room for improvement as well. Uh, Impact, this looks like a pretty good group for Cloud9, honestly. If you, if you take out SKT and you say, okay, they're probably number one, uh, I feel like that Cloud9 actually match up lane by lane pretty well against the other team yep. yeah i completely agree i mean amazing jay last worlds like when he qualified actually <laughs> cried because he wants to redeem himself last worlds he was an outright liability on edg so impact was definitely probably smiling coming into this even juke for as far as like top laners that you could have got out of korea you would say is not the most intimidating top lane i don't think yeah. for impact to go up against. well i mean you if you can say that's smack yeah, sorry got smack, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean duke is a close second <laughs> even though Kuve, like uh stepped up his laning phase a lot a uh, I'd, I'd, still, I'd, I'd put Duke runner. above uh, yeah. QV for sure, though. I think Duke is still like a monster top laner, especially mm -hmm. 1v1. Yes, he has issues when it comes to, like, let's say, teleporting and maybe playing with the team. Mm -hmm. But in a pure 1v1, him and Impact versus each other, that's going to be super exciting. And the thing about top lane, obviously, it's not a one versus one, though. If we go back to this group, Impact, you know, versus uh, Ime, even if Road makes his trips up there, right, which he's going he's to going do. To. And even if a void list is going to be up there, one of the most impressive things about Impact's play was his ability to deal with multiple players, you know, try and get away, not give up these deaths where top laners are receiving a lot of pressure. And now to put a little capper on this group, I want to take a look at SKT reacting to their group draw. Uh, pretty much all business for the defending <laughs> champions here as, uh, you know, being... The two seed still very confident drawn into uh, Flash Wolves. I mean, if you're looking to repeat and win the whole thing, yeah. then you don't really care what group you're in. I mean, I guess you do a little bit for the road. Maybe at yeah, EDG. How much do something. I have to show? Yeah, how much do I have to play them early on? Yeah. And, you know, as long as they don't have EDG, as soon as they see that, they're like, okay. I mean, all that matters for SKT is get first place. So, again, you dodge the other first uh, seeds, teams. you know, in, in the quarterfinal. You don't get Tigers, you don't get EDG, most yeah. likely. That's what matters for SKT. You're, you're going for the final. And All the right. other thing is form just doesn't matter for this team. I mean, even if they lost coming into this, I mean, had a very shaky playoff run, they're, they're just so good with preparation. That's what we've seen time and time again. So you have to assume that you're going to get them at 100 in the group stage. All right, prediction time. Sounds like this one might be a little bit more of a toss-up. Mm. So starting with you, Spawn, who's getting out of this group? I think that SKT is a clear number one, and I think that... <laughs> CLG, uh, sorry, Cloud9. Cloud9. Well, CLG gets in that group. He's looking at me. Like, oh. yeah, no, I think that Cloud9 actually will get out, but I think that I may should be the dark horse in this group. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I hate the hate this group. Honestly. Come to the dark side. Because like my SKT friend. is a clear number one. I think C9 is super exciting team to watch. Uh, I think they have some issues, especially mid to late game. They can get punished, but I don't think it's Flash Rules and I may who will punish that okay. specifically. I think actually C9 will win the early game. 
in these games here, which is so important. So I'm going to have to go C9 yeah. as well. Okay. But I think it's going to be extremely close, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Flash Wolves I may make it out. Sounds yeah. good. I think I've given mine away a little bit. I do think SCP really? is going to be number one <laughs> and Cloud9 number two. But it's not just, uh, you know, having a lot of time with Cloud9, right? Uh, it's because they specifically match up very well, yeah. I think, versus the Flash Wolves and I may. So in agreement here, although we recognize that this is going to be a close group and very really close. anything Incredible. might be able to happen. Well, that's our thoughts on Group B. Time to send it one uh, again back over to Freaking Jack to get you guys up to speed on what you were saying about Group C. Thanks very much, Dash. And I don't know, we have three analysts. These same predictions. We could just have Kobe, yeah, you know? Yeah, say the whole thing over. NA, yep. you know, they're going to beat the... Yeah. Jack, can you say that too? I'll say SK Team Flash Wolves. Oh, there we go. We got some divergence here. Yeah. On the desk, this is great, and on the stage, whatever. Let's bring up your tweets, and uh, as we do that, though, let's take a look at the teams in Group C to refresh everyone on which teams we are talking about. Of course, Edward Gaming from the Chinese LPL as the Pool 1 team, AHQ Esports Club from the LMS, H2K Gaming from the European LCS, and INTZ representing Brazil through the International Wildcard. Yeah, and we saw the reaction from INTZ when they got drawn into this group. They were pretty happy about it. I think yeah. EDG is a powerhouse, mm -hmm. and I think that the other teams, maybe they'd have a chance of doing a making a little bit of noise. Group C is the group of life. Wow. Yeah. And that's generally kind of what we'd agree with when we just see those teams getting drawn in. I think much like um, we had with Payne in, in last year at Worlds in Group A, this is one of the better chances for a wildcard team to make it out of groups, to, to, to make a stab. And I think these are some of the weaker teams that could have pulled. So I think it's a good luck for INTZ as well as the, the other teams buying for second here. Edward Gaming, obviously the favorite. Next up here, Keynote says, at least sports hashtag world, Group C probably has the highest chance for any team to advance out of the quarterfinals. Going to be an epic one to watch. Definitely agree. Yeah, technically, every team has exactly the same chance of advancing I, to their group. I, I, I but suppose. as far as H2K is considered, right? Like, I have them power ranked a little bit lower than any of the other teams. There is a chance they can make it out of this group. I'm not going to say it's, like, my prediction, but sure. like, of all the groups they could be drawn into, they have to be very happy. And we had the analysts say that G2 is favored uh, back in their group as well. So we're looking yeah. at two European teams looking pretty good for the chance to get out. And then finally, here at the bottom here, uh, Lol Tilu says, Group C is looking fun, and upsets can happen. And, and I agree. I think Edward Gaming, though a clear favorite, the other three are all very tight. Yeah, exactly. And even if we look back a couple years, like even though EDG is always super hyped coming into Worlds, HQ has always played them tight. And HQ has always shown up at Worlds. I think all the way back to 2014, they split 1-1 in the group stage and ended up going into a tiebreaker with those guys. Right. So anything can really happen in this group. Yeah, I mean, we always underdog the LMS teams, but they made top eight for both their squads last year. Flash Wolves yeah. topped their group over uh, Koo Tigers back then. So don't underrate the LMS, but that's going to do it for us. Let's send it over to our analysts. So Jens, Group C here, as we mentioned, EDG, one of the favorites of this group, and looking like they would have been very happy with the draw that they got in having AHQ, H2K, and INTZ. Of course, then I don't really know what's happening between those bottom three teams. Do you guys have any ideas? EDG is wrapped. They went through undefeated group stages, yeah. and they're undefeated in playoffs. They're going to be undefeated in this as well. Like, they're so much stronger than the teams in this group. When I look at it, AHQ and H2K, I actually do not have any idea how these two teams are going to play up against each other. Because H2K, for me, are so new and, you know, they're playing with Forgiven now and you're AD Carry. I mm -hmm. think that it changes the dynamic of the team. And then AHQ look like a completely different team in their run to actually make it to Worlds this time around. They struggled a lot during the regular split. And then they just ramped it up, and Westor's champion pool completely changed. Yeah, I think a lot of people would actually rate AHQ above Flash Wolves if you look at just the two LMS teams, even though Flash Wolves, of course, is the first seed mm -hmm. coming into this tournament. So I think AHQ can definitely get out of this group. Yep. Uh, on paper, if you just look at like players versus each other, H2K and what they do well is a lot, you know, about Yankos as a jungler in the early game, who is the strongest member on H2K against actually the weakest on AHQ in yeah. Mountain, who is not a great jungler, but the meta does kind of fit him, I guess, a little bit. He can play some Rek'Sai here and there. Still, I think Yankos is going to have a fantastic day against him. And then everyone else, like, they're fairly even matches across the board. Westlaw is a slightly weaker laner than Ryu, but I don't think that's game-changing. So I think these guys is like 50-50 between H uh, H2K and AHQ. And INTC, they're trying to play spoiler here. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that this group actually, uh, in order to predict the, the second team getting out, we're going to have to have more intel on the boot camp. Because yes. the boot camp is going to influence this group pretty heavily. And one of the reasons, you know, we saw some reactions there. HQ practice a lot with EDG, usually at all the international events. They're pretty close mm -hmm. organizations. They're very sad to be in this group, not only because, yes, EDG will probably beat them, uh, but also because that's one of their main practice partners. But again, if you are HQ and you face H2K, you know, you must feel pretty good still of your chances of getting out. <laughs> H2K's biggest problem, it's honestly themselves. Uh, they've had issues throughout the year. Uh, a lot of things have been visa, there have been injuries, there's been internal problems. Going into a boot camp, 
I actually don't expect them to improve an insane amount, but I hope they prove me wrong because I think they have the talent on this roster, like five great players, but they need to work together to actually become a great team. And now EDG will be confident going into this group, but we actually have a reaction shot from them in response to Cloud9 being drawn into the group prior to them. So happy to have dodged what would be probably the strongest third seed team and get INTZ <laughs> instead. Here it is, a little bit of laughter and cheers. Uh, for the LPL squad. And the reason I think they're so relieved about this is Cloud9 play a very similar game to EDG. So it would very much be whoever gets that advantage and can transition into these 5v5, very strong team fighting lineups. And I think that on paper, even Impact, as well as Bjergsen, would give the solo laners from EDG a lot of trouble at the early stages of the game. So, ah, uh, Bjergsen. Jensen. No, Dane. Wait, wait, oh, we're Dane, going to say Dane. Dane, and now I looked at him. I looked at him, I I looked it for it. Uh, yeah, I think that they line up very well versus Scout and Mouse. So, like, as far as this goes, I think that, yeah, that's a good bullet to dodge if you are the EDG yeah. lineup. I mean, like you said, Cloud9 uh, being the third seed makes them probably the scariest there, and everybody kind of wants to dodge that, right? Yeah. And they did. You know, that's the thing about this group. All they right. have INTC. It's about HK and HQ, honestly. Prediction time. Deficio, we're starting with you. EDG first, and I mean, I could go EU biased Ooh. and just say, like, yeah, HK is going to make it out, but I actually believe HQ will get their stuff together, and I think HQ will... Get like one win more than H2K and make mm -hmm. it out of this group. So it's going to be a tight race for that second Super seed. Super tight. Super but tight. But the edge goes to HQ. Spawn, what are you thinking? I think EDG make it out, and I'm actually the opposite. I think that the early game really will get rolling from the jungle position, and that this is going to be a very big snowball. I think head-to-head -head will come into it somewhere, and I think that right now H2K is better in a head-to-head -head matchup on Summoner's Rift. Yeah, this one is very difficult. Obviously, number Talk one, about the boot camp. EDG. I know, right? Uh, a lot it's, it's so hard predicting this far in the future because so much changes yeah. when these teams go three patches forward into the future. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm slightly leaning towards uh, Spawn's analysis here because I really do like the early game, uh, especially against AHQ. I've never really been impressed with their you know, control of the, you know, the meta and the late game. Uh, and so I think I am going to give a slight edge to H2K and get, have them second. All right, so a little bit of a split decision here in Group C. Be curious to what, uh, know what you guys think at home. Now it's time to throw it back to Freak and Jat one last time to get your thoughts on our final group. Thanks very much, Dash. Jat, we finally got some, <sighs> some differences. Refreshing. To ah, different thanks to Fischio for it's sandbagging your own region. Good job, man. Yeah. <laughs> he, really he's the one who's managed to stand up to what's wrong with the world and say, no, Europe will fail at Worlds. Now let's go ahead and talk about, <laughs> I don't know. Let's go ahead and talk about some Twitter questions and also bring up our Group D teams. TSM, the number one squad out of North America, coming and represent the Pool 1 squad. Royal Never Give Up, who is recently at the Midseason Invitational, representing the Chinese LPL. Samsung Galaxy back at Worlds here from South Korea and Splice from Europe pulling into yeah. uh, a tough group, absolutely. I don't care if we overuse the word, but this is a spicy group right yeah, here. Like, as far as the things that TSM didn't want to get drawn in, RNG was the worst-case LPL team. SKT would have been the worst-case Korean team, but they got the second worst there and yeah. still got a Chinese and a Korean team in there. So, like... Yeah. It's going to be tough for those guys. And then Splice also get pulled into this. So super exciting group. Yeah, it's, it's at least a splicey group. Absolutely. So let's see what you guys had to say about this one. Uh, Karage, I hope I said that right. Group D is the dev group. Again, hashtag worlds. Totally agree. And it wants agree. to involve TSM. Agree. You insulted the Twitter analyst before. This is good analysis. Batting a thousand so far on Twitter. Next up, JD's Outly Sports. Is it reasonable to say that TSM may be the strongest team in Group D next to Royal Never Give Up? I, mean, I think it is reasonable. It is reasonable. The number one seed in the group is TSM. A lot of people have them power ranked very high in this, but mm -hmm. like the expectations are high, and with that comes pressure. Yeah. And it's not like they're fighting against slouches in this group. They're an incredibly strong team, so they could very easily as well as they could get first, they could get third or fourth. Yeah, it's the test for TSM. If you really are a top four team, you top this group, you beat mm -hmm. a number two team from another, gr from, a, from another group and make the top four yourselves with all the hard work. Finally here, Lenk says, at Elise Sports, Doublelift versus Uzi, Group D hype. Yeah. And for some reason, I wasn't thinking about that. That's an awesome matchup right yeah, there is. in the bottom lane. Um, They're great players. Not to mention he's going to get to lane against Core JJ support. That's another super hype match. Wonderful. Like rematch from North America. There you go. Bring back the North American I'm players. I'm, done. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I agree. So Twitter, wonderful 3-0 and on these yeah. tweets. All of you are incredibly smart. Good job. Tweet like these guys. Learn from them. Wonderful stuff. Chat, thank you very much. Thank Dash, you. take it away. All righty, so there's our Group D, as was mentioned, the group of death here this time around. Uh, but I want to I hit that second tweet. Is TSM the strongest team next to RNG? I think most people would contest that they just are the strongest team in that group. I think um, a lot of people kind of undervalue Samsung 
because mm -hmm. they weren't supposed to be here technically. The KT was supposed to go, obviously, as the third best Korean team. I think Samsung looked much better in the gauntlet. And I think coming into this, with the preparation we know Korean teams like to do, how serious they take this, you know, how fully try hard it is for someone like Samsung to show they are, you know, deserved of the spot here. I actually think Samsung can challenge TSM for the number one spot. Okay. And I think Ooh. RNG is the one who actually moves slightly down on my list personally. Interesting. TSM should be the best team in this group. I mean, I, I, <laughs> we I, I even don't even know the play North American players as I've shown from this show so far. Yeah. But TSM on paper, I think, match up like incredibly well. We haven't seen them play internationally. They've got two very new players to international in Hansa as well as Biofrost. But I have like faith in TSM to make it out of this. Who I don't have faith in is RAG. They are a completely different beast <laughs> from MSI. So I'm putting the disclaimer. I'm not doing you full You guys are self-killing your own region. Uh, here. No, but We're honest, honestly. Uh, yeah. RNG uh, are different. I actually want some more clarity on your, your Samsung point. Were you saying that you think Samsung are the strongest in this no, group? No, like I said they can challenge okay. TSM okay. for the number one spot and I, they move RNG down. Samsung definitely have a lot of passion and I love all of the stories about this team. You know, all the role swaps and everybody, you know, ambition finally getting there and all of that. Uh, but, yeah, I do think that TSM are the strongest group. Uh, looking at how much practice and the infrastructure that they've invested in this year for TSM is incredible. They actually practice six days a week. Uh, you know, they have psychologists on payroll and all, all of this, I think, contributes so much to, uh, you know, dealing with that, like we talked about, the three patch changes yeah. and the different world metas. Uh, so I do have a lot of confidence in them. Here's the big thing. I want TSM to do well. I think every single Western fan should want TSM to do well, just like with Fnatic last yep. year, because you need some of these flagship organizations who kind of lead the way and show, hey guys, we can challenge for top four because we've done all these things correct mm -hmm. during the split or during the year. And it's super, super important then that they actually do well. So I think TSM, yes, they should be able to get first in this group, but I think again, Samsung will definitely give them a run for their money. And that's why it's going to be super, super exciting because RNG is that wildcard and Splice, they're here to learn, basically. I was going to say, let's talk about the other Western team because we haven't hit them yet. Splice, I mean, do you even consider them uh, capable of getting out of this group considering that you have TSM, RNG, and Samsung right above them? I mean, obviously the lowest chance for sure. Okay. Uh, very new team, very young players coming in from basically relegation to, to Worlds now. So I think if you are Splice, obviously you're going to go in here and you're going to try your best, but honestly, you're here to learn as much as possible and hopefully the, the lineup stays together for next year. I can see them take a game or two, but I don't think they're going to make it out of group. Trashy yeah. needs to go insane if they get out of this. Like, just going up against some of the junglers in this group and, like, you know, MLXG, Sven's been playing very well. Sven Skerin, sorry, has been playing very well, not the AD carry. I'll say the <laughs> He's also name. good. Uh, yeah, he's also very, very good. You know, Ambition has had very big high peaks and some <laughs> low troughs, in my opinion. So I think that this is one of the, like, this is a role-dependent thing for me for Splice. If certain members can play well, that will get to the later stage of the game. They'll be able to set up their 1-3-1, their heavy macro play. And then maybe they do pull apart someone like an RNG who struggle in that area of the yeah. game. Yeah, if RNG does not snowball early oh, against okay. all three teams in this group, they're going to struggle so much in mid to late game. They are very poor at setting up multiple lanes, they're setting up dragons and barons, and they, they basically win games by going all in aggression. And to provide clarity, our thing about MSI was that they were a one-man unit behind Marta that had no indecision. And the reason that we... I personally think that that has changed is now that they look very on different pages and different wavelengths. MLXG is not playing the same. Xiao Hu is uh, definitely a lesser man, Kobe. So we loved him so much. I love MLXG is one of my favorite players of all time, actually, just yeah. because of his willingness to take risks. Yep. His tolerance for risk is among the highest that I've ever seen for any jungler. You know, he'll start just one camp, go gank multiple times off of just one. Anyways. Uh, that's, that's one of the things about RNG that has disappointed me the most coming off of MSI is actually how Uzi has changed this team. And I feel like a lot of the changes are due to him. And the fact that Looper and Uzi are on opposite sides of the map, in my opinion, hurts this team the most. Because Looper was their best player at MSI. I mean, he was, the game they won against SKT, he absolutely crushed Duke in the laning phase. And the fact that he's not near uh, Uzi means that he just gets zero jungle pressure. He gets less gold than Mako across games. That's a top laner versus a support. Like, it's just really hard for this team. Well, it seems fitting that we've hit this group probably the longest out of all the groups because it seems the most uncertain. So prediction time, one last time. Kobe, I'm going to start with you putting you on the spot, the two that are making it to the quarterfinals. Uh, I'm going to go with TSM for number one. And number two, 
Uh, I want to see Ambition have some success after finally making it to Worlds. I don't want him to finally make it to Worlds and then get kicked Fresh out of the group. <laughs> so I'm going to go Samsung. Is that a sympathy vote? <laughs> Apparently it is. I know, but... We're honest over here and we just say what we believe. I mean, yeah. Like, I say TSM yeah. gets first and right. I think Samsung, led by Crown, who is one of the absolute best mid laners in Korea, okay. will get second place and uh, be able to. Oh, you say what you believe, which is exactly the same. <laughs> no, you like sympathy. He's saying it with conviction. <laughs> yeah, you were. Like, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. I'm not I don't sure. Know. It's a thing. All right. Spawn, what's it going to be? Go splice. I think that TSM <laughs> are like heavy favorites in this group. And then I think that. Uh, see, you pointed to, I'm going to point to the top laner, actually, of Samsung. I think that Kuve is going to get some help out of Ambition and, like, absolutely run, like, all over the RNG lineup. I think that RNG might actually lose to Splice as well. So, I, I'm going with uh, TSM deal, Samsung. I just love that Deficio has to reach for other analysts to get behind DU now. <laughs> he can't even do it Dude, himself. Like, Can you please get behind them? I can't wait uh, for HK to get out of Group uh, C and I just look really stupid. Uh, they're all going to flame you. So. Yeah. That's fine. I don't mind that. That's fine. That's right. you got to put yourself on the line to make yeah. these predictions. All right. Well, now that you've heard what our experts have to say, you can test your knowledge against theirs over at pick'em.lollysports.com, which is live right now. Last year, only one person made it through Worlds with perfect predictions, and I'm hoping we can do better this year. So if you needed any more incentive than proving these guys wrong, the winner Especially or the person who gets all of their <laughs> predictions correctly will receive every single Ultimate skin. That's pretty sweet. Now, there is plenty of Worlds programming to look forward to as we get closer to our 2016 World Championship, Worlds Classics, a new series where we will uh, take a look back at some of the most iconic moments in Worlds history, will debut September 27th. Then Primetime League will return on the 28th of September at 5 p.m. coming to you from San Francisco. Now that all leads up to the World Championship, which kicks off with the group stage in San Francisco on the 29th of September at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Tickets are still available for group stages. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can head over to lolliesports.com and uh, purchase them now. Now, if you want to see more group stage analysis, head over to facebook.com slash lolliesports, where our analysts will be having it out, or hanging out rather, after the show to answer some of your questions directly from Facebook Live in about five minutes. That's going to do it for the 2016 World's Group Draw Show. I want to give a special thanks to all of our guests who appeared on the show, and for myself, the casters and the entire live broadcast team. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in San Francisco. I'm going to put R&D.